So just over a month ago, Intel launched their new Sandy Bridge platform and the one of the most significant things that stood out from that new launch was the tremendous power and performance that you can get at such an affordable cost. So the idea of today's video is to show you how you can build a budget system out of these components uh, for under £500. So we're basing uh, a budget system, an entry level machine, um, on the Sandy Bridge platform for under £500. So all this kit here was bought from Overclockers UK and I'll just say from the outset that because I'm a forum member I get uh, free delivery and that free delivery includes next day delivery so I didn't expect it to be so great actually. It came next day and uh, I was very happy with that. And also the, uh, the optical drives and the hard drive came in uh, double bubble wrap uh, to protect it in transit so the package was very good. Uh, the free delivery, next day delivery, all fantastic. So a big thumbs up to Overclockers for that. So what we're going to do now, I'll take you through each component, why I chose it, and uh, we'll build the system. Okay, so starting things off, I've got the CPU here. We've got the Intel Core i5, which is a second generation chip. And this is the 2300, which operates at a stock speed of 2.8 gigahertz. And that's got 6 meg of level 3 cache. And this obviously comes with the integrated graphics chip, which is the HD2000. And being a retail package, this comes with Intel heatsink and fan. And uh, it comes with the extended warranty too, which is great. So this is £148, including the VAT, which is a good price. And then over onto the motherboard, we've got there the ASRock H67MGE, which is a micro ATX board. Um, this obviously integrates the... H67 chipset which is perfect for our scenario, we're not going to be overclocking but we do want um, integrated graphics ports and things like SATA 6G, USB 3 so uh, that's a great thing. Um, so this comes in at £75 including the VAT which is a, a really good price for a motherboard. Okay and on to the memory, what I went for here is the G-Skill Rip Jaws X which is a 4GB dual channel kit at 1600 megahertz and is perfect for Sandy Bridge because these modules are actually designed for the Sandy Bridge platform. So um, these particular modules operate at um, the cast timings of 7, 8, 7, 24 and at the voltage of 1.5 which is quite low. I've actually done a review on this particular kit and uh, it's a fantastic kit, really good value for money. Um, add overclock as these are 55.99 including the VAT. Uh, which is a, a you know a great deal, fantastic. Onto the case, which is behind me here. Uh, we've got the Cooler Master Elite 430, which is uh, actually a combo. So we've got in the we've got the Cooler Master Elite Power 500 Watt, which is more than enough really for what we're going to be doing. It's got plenty of power. Um, we've got enough headroom really to expand in the future if we wanted to add any more components. You know, beefing up the graphics or anything like that. Um, so this this current case and the power supply with it, the combo deal, is £64.30 which is including the VAT which you know, is a fantastic deal when you get the case and the power supply as well. So uh, perfect for a budget system really. Okay finally on to the storage and media I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue which is 500 gigabyte. Uh, this is Serial ATA and rather than going with a 3G drive, I went with a 6G drive, which is pretty much the same price. So I thought, you know, pretty much a no-brainer. You go for the faster drive rather than, um, you know, the, the older one, which is 3G. So this is a phenomenal price um, for what you get. You're getting out of this 16 meg of cash, and it's a 7200 RPM drive. And um, this is coming in at 29.99, which is phenomenal. I don't know how they can do it pretty much, you know, it's uh, 6G, as I say, absolute bargain. And then on to the, uh, the optical drives, I went with two optical drives, just so that we can copy from CD to CD. Um, and these are the Samsung SH-S223Cs, which are a 22-speed DVD rewriter. Uh, these are obviously serial ATA, so they're going to be a bit faster. And uh, absolute bargain. Uh, you're looking at £12 including the VAT each. So um, absolute buttons. 
and uh, fantastic deals from overclockers on uh, both of those items. So uh, what we'll do now, I'll uh, get all the components together, put them into the case, build the system and uh, show you how that goes. Well guys, I've finished the build, as you can see behind me here, it's powered up and everything went pretty much to plan and I'm pleased with the overall outcome. One thing I would say though is this is a budget case and compared to some of the higher price cases it's not going to offer the best cable management options. Uh, you basically just got to make do with what you can and uh, make the most of things. So what I'll do now is I'll take these side panels off, uh, take you on a close up tour, show you how I've arranged things and just to show you the overall space inside the case. Okay, so here's the Cooler Master Elite 430 with the side panel off. As you can see there with a Micro ATX board, it's very spacious. Uh, you've got lots of space in and around the motherboard. This uh, Cooler Master Elite 430 is actually quite deep. You can uh, fit 10 inch long graphics cards, so you have no problem there with most of the ones on the market at the moment. The power supply unit that comes bundled with this case is, uh, is the Cooler Master Elite 500 watts. So this has got uh, non-modular and it's non-braided as well, the cables. So you've got the black and yellow and red cables, which they don't look the most attractive. So I've dropped on the, some uh, spiral wrap just to tidy things up. And uh, the 24-pin cable that you know runs to the motherboard, that's not very long, so I've just tried to tie that back behind the hard disk drive bay, and it doesn't actually fit behind it, but you can tie it to the side, so just to keep that out of the way. Got the blue fan at the front there, the 120mm which is, uh, I'll just get you a close up so you can hear the kind of noise that comes from that. It's very quiet. And uh, just moving around the back, there isn't actually a rear exhaust fan installed um, with the case, so I've just dropped in the Noctua NF S12B which is a really good case fan. Uh, there's also slots at the top for dual 120mm fans and that's got the filters that you can remove and clean and also at the bottom we've got the space for 140, 120mm and a 90mm. So uh, lots of different options but they don't come pre-installed so you're going to have to supply them yourself. Due to the fact that we haven't got any cutouts on the motherboard tray, what I've done is I've fed the dual P4s actually behind the board so they come out up at the top. That's just to keep them out of the way, you know, from uh, airflow. Don't want to disrupt any airflow and also want to keep it as tidy as possible. Uh, so I've also done that with the USB header. So that's fed directly behind the motherboard and also the front panel audio as well. I've got that fed just up over the corner there and the case you know connectors for buttons and LEDs and things that's just fed you can just about see it there just comes behind the motherboard that's just to keep things tidy you know and uh, as best as possible as I said just before it doesn't have the best cable management in this case but you can make do with what you've got inside Obviously the components we've used today are just as an example, you can use your own personal preferences in terms of the brands and the components, um, but hopefully this has shown you that you can build a rig around Sandy Bridge for around the £400 mark and less than £500 from Overclockers UK. So as always guys, thanks very much for watching, I'll be posting a thread on Overclockers forums uh, with the article and the video, so I'd like to hear any feedback that you've got any comments uh, but it's bye from me and I'll see you in a week's time when I'll be giving you lots of footage from Seabit